Thanks to everyone who has subscribed. If you have not, please do. And thanks for coming out here. I really appreciate you. Edo elections. Why I called Ize Iyamu a thief in 2016. Hmm. This is really funny, guys. Yes. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whatever time we're reaching you today. A lot is going on with the regards to Edo state elections, which is exactly 56 days to go from today. Um, the elections are in full swing. Campaign is going on. Governor Baseki has inaugurated his campaign team in Edo State. Adam Sushomole came over the weekend into Edo State to celebrate and to, you know, his return after being uh, dropped as the national chairman of NWC and to commence campaign. But apparently the campaign seems more about him than uh, Usage Ize Iyamu, who he's supposed to be campaigning because most of the words of his campaign, 90% is about what he's going to do, which is an indicting statement to own into the fact that uh, it's, it stems from God fragilism in the sense that it's going to be ruling from proxy, telling the who you know if his candidate wins what to do. He's been. I am returning back to Edo State and I'm going to make sure that development continue. But what are we talking about? It's your candidate who is going to be doing this unless directives will be coming to him from you. And that means Godfatherism, what we are fighting against, not just in Nigeria. It starts from the state level before it gets to the federal level. Because what you see, the constituted vote in or elected governors and whatever you see, there is an unseen, unseen unwritten rule there are those who are not a, a part of the government who are behind the screen ruling truly from behind and that's why you can't see sustainable or tangible growth because these persons are the ones who determine what happened and by the time you spend three quarter of the money on them there is barely anything left to even pay salaries how much more to commence development anyway guys adam sushomel is explaining why he called uh Ize Iyamu a thief in 2016 uh, if you care to listen and you want to know more because adam sushomel is not a pushover he's a seasoned politician let's get onto the news and get all the details edo elections why i called Ize Iyamu a thief in 2016 Comrade Adam Sushomola, a former governor of Edo State, has been given reasons why he presented the governorship candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Pastor Osage Ize Iyamu, in a bad light in 2016. Back then in 2016, why the marking Ize Iyamu of the People Democratic Party and promoting Governor Gordon Obaseki, his then allies and trusted candidate Oshomole had said that Ize Iyamu, he, ha he has a very interesting lifestyle. Now, because of a crisis of identity, he wants to carry a Bible and says he's a pastor and born again. His first job was a PA to who? Go governor then Lucky Igbenedio. Second job, he was chief of staff to who? Lucky Igbenedio. Third job was secretary to the government under whom Lucky Igbenedio. And after Igbenedio ha had retired and started building his private home, now he rose. When he cannot dispute that the People Democratic Party government with Ize Yamu as a chief of staff cannot build roads, cannot build schools cannot do anything tangible. He now says he cannot be blamed. Read today's newspaper. Ize Yamu says he cannot be blamed for the failure of Igbenedio's administration government. So he agrees that the government failed, but he said he should not be blamed. All right, if we will not blame him for the failure of the government, of which he was the chief of staff and secretary to the government, should that be a reason to promote him to the office of the governor? He went on to say he had never been indicted in his life. However, speaking to a large crowd, of the people on Thursday, Oshomole said he was only marketing his products back then when he called Ize Iyamu a thief, adding that a governor, he never questioned Obaseki about his certificate. According to him, 
I have watched some videos where they are showing that I said Pastor Izeyamu when I was marketing him. Let me speak on that briefly. When you are selling Toyota, you cannot promote Mercedes. If you tell the people Mercedes is better, they will not look at your Toyota. I have heard some people saying that I, I can... <clears throat> how can a man who was disqualified who was qualified to be a governor in 2016 no longer be qualified in 2020 now as a governor i had i have never had a cause to question go where are your certificates so that was not a reason for one to debate upon governor Obaseki was never questioned under my administration. Uh, Ize Yamu, I only called him a thief for marketing purpose. Well, you've seen it all. Uh, you've heard it. That is um, the person of Adam Soshomole speaking, explaining to the people of Edo State, to everyone and anyone who cares to listen, the reasons he spoke and said some of the words he said back then in 2016. Well, my people, words do not lie. And you see, the internet today is very unforgiven. You may forget. Memory, they say, is short and can easily be forgotten. But guess what? The internet never forgets. Whatever you, go, whatever you put online and goes online, see, delete it as many times as you want to. Whoever knows his way around the internet will come up and pick it out like it was a missing pair of socks and just pick it out and you'll be wondering really and truly yes that's what happened the internet never forgives it never forgives it brings it up and it brings it up and it's as fresh as when it was said so my people this is what is going on right now as we speak uh, adam soshomola is explaining to who cares to listen but if you go back to that video and listen precisely very well you will hear him speaking from his heart then in 2016 he told the Edo state that he he has worked in the cabinet and he has been watching all the people that have been working with him closely he said if you watch the people that work with you you don't need to say much he said all the antics and all the uh, activities of governor Gordon Obaseki he was privy to he said this man does not seek approval he does not seek to be recognized he does not go online he does not call on anybody he just stays where he is performing his duty he said when you when you come there there are so many things that he has done that is promoting development and movement in the administrator administration and he was therefore encouraging everyone in the administration and at those states at large saying come alongside partner with this man you may not have known him but i know him and i can tell you for sure that this man is your man this is the person who's got your back truly and really this is the person for your administration who will make a dose state better and and for that to really publicize him telling the Edo State people whoever cares to listen whoever cares to listen that he said you know um Gordon Obaseki is the man anyway long story short they contested and he won Yes, he won, but truly and really, what the envisage was to make him the cash cow so that this is a, is a period where they can just go in there, uh, lodge money, collect money, uh, tell him who becomes his deputy, tell him who to appoint as his commissioner. Do you think it was a mistake that Gordon Obaseki and the House had problem all through his administration? No, it was not a coincidence. It was no mistake. It was because of the activities, some of the activities that were going on and nobody really wants to speak. The House was you know constituted not with his people but the people who were working for their principle and as such they want their will to come to pass and so they were seriously working against the administration to hinder it and to see that to read that they frustrate the work and that's why you can see that he did not want to inaugurate them and that was bringing a lot of contention listen my people if your state if Edo state if Nigeria is to move forward whatever state you come from and you're listening to this news in Nigeria or diaspora if we are to truly honestly make progress you have to stand by the side of truth. Enough is enough for us, you know, condoling this same cycle of, you know, recruiting and allowing these same people to prevail and to determine and to direct us on how government should be done. If you and I make up our mind and say enough is enough, 
you will see the difference in our government. Anyway, my people, don't forget to like us, to share, to subscribe, to click on the notification button so you can get our latest news. God bless you. Bye for now.